Shut up and sit down. What's going on, guys? This is MMA Complex. My name is Josh. And I'm James. And we are back. Brand new episode. It is May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. Hey. Yeah, Cinco de Mayo. Hey. <laughs> um, yesterday was May 4th. Yeah, May the 4th. Star Wars Day. Yeah, Star Wars Day. Uh, did you watch any Star Wars films yesterday? I have not. I'm just going through my timeline. It'll be a while before I get to... Yeah, you haven't seen any of the films? You, like... Yesterday, you, did you watch any uh, Rebels no. or, or... I, no, I watched the Clone Wars. Clone Wars? Okay. Yeah. I saw... What did I watch? Return of the Jedi. It's yeah. my son's favorite yeah. Star Wars movie. So uh, I watched Return of the Jedi. Um, yeah. So that, that was uh, that was my Star Wars day. We were planning to make some drinks. We were thinking of making some Star Wars inspired drinks. I saw some recipes online. I think I posted them on my Instagram and all that. But, um, but no, we didn't end up doing that. And then... Yeah, single to miles today. Uh, we just had a beer. We just had some Red Horse beer. Yeah, Filipino yeah, beer. It's, it's not Mexican, but you know, Filipino. Filipino. Yeah, they're dark, you know, close dark Asians. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. they, they they share a Mexican name. So yeah, yeah, and close that's enough. And also, uh, we are we have a guest on this week. Wei Wei Ting from um, Post Wrestling. Post Wrestling is on the show. Our great friend, our good friend. Good. It's great to talk to him again. All the way up in Toronto, Canada. A lot of things have changed for him recently. Uh, got caught up and everything. Talked a little bit about pro wrestling. Talked a little about MMA. Talked a little about the coronavirus in Canada and how that stuff's going. So you guys will catch that in just a short while. Um, other than that, everything's good. Oh, Great, well, man. Yeah. I can't complain. Yeah. Things are um, swell. What have you been watching on uh, streaming or what have you been up uh, to over the weekend? I've been watching um, Tiger King, which yes. is insane. I haven't caught he's it yet. A, I've heard nothing but crazy things about it. Yeah, him. he's he's like a he's like a pro wrestling character. He's like cause it's crazy. It's insane. Yeah, you gotta watch yeah. it. Like you won't like I can't even <laughs> tell you the shit that that comes on that show. And you, yeah. when you watch it, you like you go you'll be scratching now, your head. I've heard end. a lot of things. I've heard there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh he's got a lot of boyfriends and husbands yeah. and I hear people getting their arms bitten off and one guy has his yeah. missing legs and I hear the yeah, no fear. killed. Yeah, he's got no fear. I hear, I hear him being like almost like a, almost like a Ringling Brothers type of person, where he's just putting yeah. on shows and doing different magic he, trick shows. Yeah, yeah, he right? he looks like uh like he'd be related to Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I, I I also hear um, that his singing career is not necessarily. He's almost like a like he. Well, he I, I, I hear this information from you is that yeah. that he has someone like produce and shoot the videos for yeah. him. And then he's, it's not actually his real voice. He, it's someone, crazy. He has someone else sing for him. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. But, um, everybody thought he had an angelic voice and it's not really his. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. It's like a spoiler. A, yeah. It's, <laughs> I, I, I can't even put in words how crazy this guy is. Yeah. But so I've been watching that. Um, of course, Vanderpump Brew is my number one favorite TV show right now. I'm on season seven. There's eight seasons. So I'm close to the, the current season, yeah. Uh, night before the ninety days, which is a a spinoff of ninety day fiance that me and my girlfriend watch. Yeah, awesome show. There's a guy that's that's uh he's about fifty something. Now there's a, a ninety day fiance that everybody's talking about. Yeah, and it's the guy. I don't know his name. No he, neck. He's got no neck. Yeah, that guy. He's got the pretty Filipino wife. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's from San Diego. Okay, and. He just continuously fucks it up for himself. I heard, I, I saw a clip where he puts um, mayonnaise in his hair. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so this guy comes. He's like 50-something. He's only like 20-something. Yeah. I think he's older than her dad. He's older than her dad? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, first, so like he was like, he, he went in a banger, right? But Would that be awkward if you were older than oh, your fuck girl's yeah. dad? I mean, I'm yeah. only fucking 10 years younger than him, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then your current girlfriend's dad. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of weird, but yeah. I, I, at least I'm not like older than them. Yeah. 
But or like the same age. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, that would be, be fucking weird. That'd be kind of weird. But so he wants her to get an STD test for her, so she gets kind of offended, which yeah. is kind of understandable. His second fuck up, like he said, he he bought her a razor and told her, "Your legs are like mine, like my legs. So can you shave your leg uh-huh. so we can like have sex?" Well, I hear a thing that in the Philippines, like grooming, like that, like like typical stuff that we see here is not necessarily like an important thing. Yeah. Maybe especially where to, she's from, she's, where, she's from a very poor village. Yeah, like where you got some, where you get, especially in the poor areas, it's not a big thing to like shave your legs and yeah. shave in like certain areas and stuff like that. And then he tells her he buys her a listerine and a toothbrush, and uh, in that he she has bad breath. That she's got bad breath. Yeah. Jeez. And so, what does she say? She gets offended. She starts crying. Yeah. He said an ulcer problem. Is, is she's trying to get a green card? Is that the whole thing? No, I, th- I think she really loves him. Really? Yeah. Like but she seems she, sincere. She, she's not a citizen, so is is. I think I think, yeah, I think obviously like a lot of people see. Does it this say how? Show they, does it say how they met? On, on a Philip, well, he hit her up on a Filipino dating website. Is there a Filipino dating website? What, what's the name of it? You know? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I know. I wish I like if I was single right now, I'd be looking for that kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but then like th- that's not the worst character in the yeah. series. There's a guy, I don't know, he lives somewhere in the states, who is dating for seven years online yeah. to some person that lives in the Ukraine. Ukraine, hot. This yeah. chick is hot. Yeah, and he went four times already to to Ukraine uh-huh. to try to meet her up, and all four times she stood her up. Really? So. He swore that this time would be different. She said, okay, I'll be at the train station. He goes to, to U- Ukraine, nowhere to be found. <laughs> so he gets fucking, he gets sad, and yeah. he goes online, and he go, and all she has to do is, hi, baby, and he's, he's sucked her back, back in. He sucked back in. And she goes, okay, I'm here in your hometown, and she goes, okay, we can meet at a restaurant. Yeah. Okay, I'll be there at two o'clock. He brings fucking roses. <laughs> he orders the most expensive champagne for the restaurant. Yeah. And it's no show. Damn. And he leaves the flowers and the owner of the restaurant says, well, this happens all the time. You see American men come in with flowers and they leave by themselves. They get conned. Yeah, but all like the time. What? They, don't, they, they, they don't get anything out of it. Oh, because these, cause, like, these girls get sent money by, by the Americans. Oh. He's been sending her money for like the past seven years. Oh, and then he comes over like, yeah, come over yeah. and meet me. And then she's just a no yeah. show. And, he's, and he says, he swears that he loves her. And then... He finds out her address somehow, yeah. but I guess where she lives is like in the d- bad side of, of town. Yeah. So he drives fucking seven hours with a f- camera crew behind him looking for this one address. He gets there and knocks on the door, and it was an old man that answered the door. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so, did you, did you ever uh, like out of any any time in your life? Did you were, you know serve? Being on the internet, Facebook, MySpace, did you ever hit up anybody like, like in another country? Another country. Did you ever? Did you ever talk to anybody that was in another uh, country? Yeah, to... like in the UK, but it wasn't serious. It wasn't like like. Yeah. It didn't get to that point. How how did that come about? Like, um, it was MySpace. It was like you know, like you know, like I I don't remember how exactly how the layout was, but there was a layout where you can add friends. Yeah. And yeah, there was some where they were from other country, but it wasn't. It couldn't even get to a friendship party. It was just like a hi, a few messages, and that's it. Yeah. But there was a girl um, that lived in Michigan. Uh-huh. That was, or yeah, another country, or even another state. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you the story then. <laughs> yeah. Well, this girl, when I met her, she was fifteen, mm-hmm. and, and you were thirty. <laughs> no, I was no, I was in my twenties. <laughs> yeah, I was in my twenties, and then like you know, it didn't get to, it, it, like it didn't go nowhere. But then like for whatever reason, she just stuck to my head. Like she was like, from her her dad was from India, like the country India. Yeah, and she was like Jewish, so she was like Middle Eastern and Jewish. And I hit her, up, I think when she was eighteen, we we. Reconnected. She got. She gave me her number, 
And she never changed her number. She had the same number, and I called her. She recognized her voice. She said that my voice is really distinct, and she recognized it right away. So they were talking, and things got kind of serious where we had feelings for each other, but I knew that she was never going to have him because yeah. she lives in Michigan. I live in L.A. But she got a, a job in L.A. Uh. that brought her to L.A., and I met her for the first time when she was 19. I was like 30. <laughs> okay, okay. And she was 19, right? Hey, she was, was close. She was 19, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I met her for the first time and we had good sex that first time. And I ended up living with her because it was like a, her job. It was like it was like a part of the, the core. Yeah. It was called City Year where they, they, they were like homework helpers inside like uh, schools. Yeah. But these people apply from around the uh, the nation. So she had two roommates. One was from Michigan and the other girl was from Utah. Yeah. And I was living there because they, they felt comfortable with me being there. So they wanted a male in their house. So I, ended up, I, was, I was 30 years old living with two 19-year-old chicks. No, three 19-year-old chicks. And I was even paying rent. <laughs> <laughs> she had to be my girlfriend for like two, three years. Yeah. 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 yeah and, then, and then we met, we then met we, shortly, shortly after, after that. Yeah. Went after that whole. Yeah. 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 But that's the. That's my only online relationship that came to fruition. Hey, well, that's a successful one. Yeah. I think I was talking to this one girl. I think it was MySpace. Pretty sure it was MySpace. And we were messaging back and forth. We even got to the point where we were going to like start like uh, video chatting. So I, I had like a, like a camera set up and everything. And then um, I, went and, I went and bought one. I actually still have it somewhere in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is a long time ago. This is probably like I was probably like in my early twenties, uh, thirty-five now, and and or about to be thirty-five. Um, and then she was uh, from Brazil. Ooh, that's a good. Yeah, one. she's a Brazilian chick. That's a good country to pick one from. Yeah, and and it was, this was on like I think it was MySpace, and and we were chatting back and forth, and it was like it was one of those things where like you know suggestions get popped up, or you start browsing, you know, you start browsing for hot chicks and seeing them yeah. around, and at that age you're like you know. You're, a message one and be like, "Hey, I'm no, my dude, that was so fun. What's your name? Dude? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I get a response. Yeah. Was like, and was sometimes awesome. you'll, you'll get a response. You know, so random, random people, and you start talking real quick. Um, yeah, so we're we're chatting for for a few months, just yeah. chatting back and forth, and I, I the whole time I'm like, this could be a fucking fifty year old man, you know what I mean? Yeah. But who knows? I mean, the profile looks legit. You got some real yeah. pictures on there. I see post every now and then. Do you um, remember? No, so we we we. We, I think when when we attempted to do the whole video chat, yeah, and it it didn't get go through or like it did. We didn't sync up our turn, or like when we we're gonna do it and how we we're gonna do it. I just kind of like ended up dropping it and kind of just forgetting about it really. Mm. But we did have a good, you know, almost six months conversation. Damn, you know, from what I remember, and it was like a Damn. pretty regular thing. So, and did I thought you think that, about it, huh? You still think about her. I, I don't know. No, I don't know. I think of uh, when I do think of it, and which is not often, it's probably maybe the second time in the last like I don't know, 10, 15 years that I've thought about it. But like, um, I, I just think of, I wonder if she was actually real or not. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, this is all pre tender, pre I don't remember the name either. I don't remember yeah, her name. This is where, in that, in that, like, this, this is like, like the original this, dating site. This early, was... early social media, MySpace yeah. era, before Twitter, before YouTube, yeah. really. You know, really took off and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So, yeah, it just, it just made me th it made me think. I'm like, hey, did you ever? Yeah, and at least it worked out for you, where you actually, yeah, got and a like, girlfriend out of it for and, a couple and, years. And I got to check off a thing for my bucket list, like bang a Middle Eastern. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So that, was, that was awesome. <laughs> she, was, she was a a mix, right? Like, a, like yeah, Indian, she was Jewish and Indian, Jew, Jewish. Yeah, yeah, pretty. I, I think the only one that I need to conquer is black, but I don't know what's gonna happen. Not at this point, I don't no. Know. Unless some of you make some changes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. You never dated a black uh, you never did I've never dated a black girl. I banged a, a dark Asian. That doesn't count. No, it doesn't. No, no, <laughs> I'm saying, but like it, it's an Asian family. It's an Asian family. <laughs> okay, okay. You're an Asian girl. Yeah. So that so that made yeah. me feel kind of good about myself because yeah. I got an Asian one out of the way. She had really pointed yeah, nipples. I, I I I you know, we I dated a Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah we both, we both while, did. You know yeah. what I mean? But, yeah, Cambodian. Yeah, Cambodian. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, it's good times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But yeah, yeah, let's get to some fights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me sit straight up, man. <laughs> uh, UFC 249 is this weekend. Um, uh, what can you say, man? Uh, it's actually going to happen. Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson. We could break down the card right now. Um, not much in terms of news. I don't really want to cover too much other stuff. Every, like we, we cover a little, uh, go on one topic away in terms of the, uh, like what he thought about the, the, you know, the events going on, mm. you know, them putting on events and I forgot what else we bring up with him. We brought up one other thing. Fight Island and yeah. Fight Island. Yeah. All that good stuff. Um, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, the talk of unions during this whole time. Yeah. Um, but they they have been there's been a lot of videos there's even i think uh tony ferguson put up a video of him getting uh swabbed for covid uh the, yeah it's on video it's on his uh instagram or facebook or wow. i don't know what right now um and then there's a couple lot of matchups you know people uh getting matched up on the 13th card on the 16th card you have amanda nunez and i believe felicia spencer has moved to june or july mm, yeah june june 6th um, and that's about it. There's not a whole lot of news out there aside from the fights this weekend, which is actually taking place. It's actually going to happen down in Florida. Well, let's break down the card right now and get right to it and give you our picks. Tony Ferguson is a nightmare for anybody. That guy's terrifying. Tony Ferguson, the longest winning streak in the UFC lightweight division. 12 straight fights. He's a brilliant madman. One of the most creative guys to ever step into the octagon. To win. The UFC's human highlight film is Justin Gaethje, the most entertaining fighter on this roster. This guy is a knockout artist. One bonuses in each of his UFC appearances. Holy smoke, Justin Gaethje has some power. Have you ever seen anything like Justin Gaethje? This is UFC 249 Ferguson versus Gaethje. Uh, the V-Star Arena, uh, Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville, Florida, completely empty. Only uh, people, uh, you know, necessary personnel allowed in. Um, the main card, Yorgandis De Castro versus Greg Hardy, uh, Calvin Cater, Jeremy Stevens, Francis Ngannou, Rosenstreak, uh, Henry Cejudo's Dominic Cruz, and Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. That's your main card. Um, Donald Cerrone, Anthony Pettis, All Neck, Verdum, Jaco Rizzoza, uh, Vincente Luque versus D uh, Nico Price, Bryce Mitchell, Charles Rosa, and Sam Alvey versus Ryan Spann. That's your card from top to bottom right there. Jesus Christ. Great. On pay per view, uh, going for what, 60 ish dollars? I, I don't agree with that, but whatever. Whatever. We had that conversation already in terms of like whether it should be free or not. Um, on, the, on the undercard, uh, let's go. Let's start from the 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 prelims and go up. Uriah Hall versus Jacare Souza. Uh, this is Jacare back down to middleweight. Um, who do you have for this one? Jacare. Jacare. I'm gonna go with Jacare too. Yeah. I think I think he's back down to where he should be. Mm -hmm. uh, he looked uh, his gas tank wasn't the same at light heavyweight. No. Back down to he, he's so dangerous. You know, instant still dangerous guy. Carlos Esparza versus Michelle Waterson. Uh, Waterson. I'm gonna go. I, I, I'm on the fence on this one. I'm, I'm gonna go with Esparza. I think her wrestling uh, might be able to pull it out and kind of. Michelle did not impress me against oh, Joanna. Yeah. It was tentative. She super tentative, and almost like like why did she even show up? And if she brings that kind of performance in this one, I think Carla Esparza is just gonna just uh, have her way with her in terms yeah. of the wrestling department. Um, All neck versus Verdum. 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 I'm gonna go with Verdum. This is a return of Verdum after two years, two year span uh, layoff uh, for USADA positive test. But yeah, uh, Donald Cerrone versus Anthony Pettis. This is the rematch from six, seven years ago. Um, I'm gonna go Pettis. Pettis. Yeah. Do you gonna go with Pettis? Yeah. I think I think Pettis too. I think he's had, he's been on a a better streak than Cerrone has. Even though Cerrone had a really good year and had a couple of losses recently. Yeah. It's, it's all pointing to Anthony Pettis having yeah. a better turnout. Uh, DeCastro versus Greg Hardy. I'm going Hardy. I'm going to go Hardy, I'm gonna go with Hardy too. Yeah. Uh, Calvin Cater versus Jeremy Stevens. Cater. Yeah, this is this is a tough one. This is a tough one. I'm gonna probably go Cater too. I think we're on that. We're kind of we've been yeah pretty similar at least for. Uh, for the most part, uh, Francis Nagano versus Rosenstreak. 
in Gano. I'm going to go in the Gano too. I don't think Rosenstrike is that dangerous in terms of like against a guy like Francis. I don't, I don't think he has, I think he's got the power, but he, I've, in his last fight, he doesn't, he doesn't have that. He just seems a little green. Yeah. And I think in Gano going fighting or losing against Stipe, I think really helped him a lot. Yeah. I think Nagano has gotten over that hump. Yeah. You know, um, Henry Cejudo versus Dominic Cruz. This is going to be a tricky one. I think the odds are in Cejudo's favor in this one. Everybody's kind of going towards their head. Kind of I'm going to go Cejudo. Yeah, Dominic's been out three years, mm. almost. He takes his... I, th- I think Cejudo's a more well-rounded fighter, too. It's going to be an interesting fight. If, if Dominic can have a performance like he is capable of, I don't know how old he is at the moment now. He's probably in his mid-30s right now. It's gonna be if he can prove us wrong again. It's gonna be interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. We go with Justin Gaethje. You're gonna go with Justin Gaethje. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Damn, dude. Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Just because like, winner, I winner, think, yeah, winner fights Khabib. I think I think he'll be a tough matchup for both Gage for both um, Khabib and. And Ferguson, I think it's, I think, uh, I think people are overlooking him. Yeah, I think, I think Ferguson doesn't, we all know he doesn't cover up and he gets hit a lot. I think Gaethje is, uh, he, his wrestling is really underrated. I think he's a, he's a great wrestler, but he just hides it because he, he just strikes a lot. Yeah. And I think that he, he could take a punch better than Ferguson. I think he can, I think when Ferguson, when Ferguson gets hit, I think Gaethje, Gaethje's not gonna let him out of the fucking, out of the, out of the game. I mean, like, let him breathe. I think he's going to continue to punish him. Yeah. And I think, I think, although when Ferguson is on his back, he, he delivers offense with elbows from his back, but I think Gaethje on top is going to be a problem for Ferguson. Yeah. I think he has the potential to do upset. I did too. Yeah. It is but like, I wouldn't be surprised if Ferguson beats him either. Yeah, I think per- Ferguson's a favorite, but I think people are overlooking Justin Gaethje in this fight, thinking that Tony's going to move on and fight Khabib. And, and I think Gaethje can beat for I mean could be too. Yeah, I think he has a good shot. You yeah. know, I know he hasn't had the the success that they both have had. Yeah, but I think he's dangerous, and I think people are overlooking him. Yeah, he's a different fighter. Like he's not he's not Rockham Sockham anymore. He's he's no, a he's a different he's guy. A he's kind of learned d- a little bit. fighter. Yeah, yeah. All right, <sighs> that's our picks. I'm gonna go with Justin Gaethje too. I'm gonna go with him for the upset. If you if you were to have a hundred bucks, let's say a hundred bucks, and you had to put three uh, put your money on three fighters. Split it up evenly. I could do the math. Any three? Any three on the main card. You could do winners, losers, if you had 100 bucks. I'm doing Gano. Okay. You had to do a parlay, right? A three-way parlay? Yeah. Can you read me the, the, the main card again? Yeah. Ferguson, Gaethje, Cejudo, Cruz, Nagano, Rosenstreak, Calvin Cater, Jeremy Stevens, Castro, Greg Hardy. Okay. It'll be Hardy, Gano. Um, Cater, and Cater, Cater, yeah. To 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 put your money on yeah. that 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 will win. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Okay. If I if I was I was I would put De Castro. I would put Stevens, and I'd put Gaethje. Yeah. Right. If I was a bet, if I was a bet on upsets, no. you know what I mean. These oh, are upsets. No, it could be upsets. Oh. You could be guarantees. Let's say let's say upsets for your upsets. Who would you put for your upsets? Oh. If that's a different Gaethje Suhudo. And Stevens. Gaethje, Cejudo, Stevens? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But Cejudo wouldn't be an upset, upset really, right? Well, okay. So he's, oh, he's, he's but, a, but if you throw him in there, he would have to win. And the other two would have to win to get yeah. to maximize your money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Let's, uh, before we go, we're going to get to the interview. So, oh, yeah. so here's our friend from Post Wrestling waiting. All right. Up next on our show, we have postwrestling.com's Mr. Wei Ting, he has a uh, weekly shows on uh, on audio and video, and you can join his Patreon um, for what, six bucks, no five bucks a month, or is it minimum six? Six, six? bucks a we're, month. We're, we're we're a high class. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Six go to uh, postwrestling dot com slash Patreon and join. It's a uh, it's really good content. So Wei, thanks for coming on again. We really appreciate it. And uh, how yeah, things uh, been, man? Since uh, all the madness of COVID. 
Yeah, I mean, well, first, it's nice to talk to you guys. I mean, I've, uh, I feel like it's been like quite a while since uh, yeah. I got to see you. You both yeah. last time, I believe it was actually in LA. Was yeah, it? it was. Yeah, Long last Beach. time we spoke. Yeah, yeah last time we spoke. So, uh, so it's nice to catch up with you guys. Yeah. Uh, how we've been? I've been dealing with it over here in Toronto. I mean, uh, I'm sure it's you know similar to many parts of the world, but I feel like we've been pretty much like shut down for like seven weeks uh and i've really just kind of kept to myself for quite a while um doing my regular routine of keeping for some reason like i would say most of my daily routine is is somewhat uninterrupted because wrestling has still been going on yeah like consistently throughout so i still do my shows with john um in fact like in some ways we're busier than before yeah because the news certainly hasn't slowed down um and i'm also like uh driving my fiance to and from work she works in healthcare as well uh just like you james and so you know every morning i you know just to kind of schedule fit her routine with my own and and as you know i'm very much like a night owl it's and she's very much like an uh an eight to four type of person so it's it's been it's made things actually a bit busier for me yeah wow and you were mentioning that you haven't seen uh, you haven't seen actually face to face john in like five weeks at least yeah, or however yeah. long since, you know, this whole thing's Seven like, weeks, occurred, yeah. I mean, since I would say, like, for the better part of, what, since, like, March 10th? March. Yeah. Hey, my birthday. <laughs> something like that. Well, yeah. me, you, and yeah. John, it's your birthday's very really close to each other. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, like, you know, like, it was probably the better part of, like, seven weeks now yeah. that I haven't, John, John and I haven't really done a show, like, in person together, so. But Skype's, like, worked out. In fact, like it's it's been a great excuse to try to figure out more video stuff yeah you know? seriously and how how is it like over there in terms of the lockdown are you guys is it kind of like us where it's like restaurants or only takeout uh, banks yep. and hospitals are basically the only other thing grocery stores and that's about it is that's kind of how it is yeah pretty much i would say all the restaurants are are well most of them if they choose to still allow takeout um there's certainly a list of essential services and it's actually quite a pretty long list so okay um but like you know most actual stores are closed outside of grocery stores Mm -hmm. um um i'm trying to think you know um certain services like you know you can't get a haircut yeah um you know, even you can't even go to the dentist unless it's, a, it's an emergency, I believe. Yeah. So I would say it's very probably quite similar to what you guys have. Yeah. And has it been like um, difficult to adjust to all this? Or we are um, like a homebody. I'm like I'm. I'm actually. I'm actually like quite amazed at how well I've adjusted. To yeah. be honest with you, yeah. like it's. I, I really feel like my. I'm somebody who like naturally likes to stay at home anyway. Yeah. And like, I kind of have to make an effort to go and like be social. So this is just kind of like, it's <laughs> made me, it's made life easier. Yeah. Actually, in some yeah. Ways. <laughs> uh, but no, I've actually kind of like, in, it, it's hard to, for me to say like, I've enjoyed any part of this because there are people out there that are going through yeah. the worst, like yeah. everything, you know, right. financially uh, in terms of health, so I, I don't really want to be insensitive to those people, right? Uh, but as far as my but my day to day for my adjusting, it's 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 actually been totally fine. Okay, and uh, you know, besides work, like what other things have you been doing to keep yourself sane? Like, are you watching shows? Are you like playing Exercising, music? Or are you? Yeah, trying to do a bit of everything. You know, yeah. uh, like the 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 schedule keeps me kind of busy. But like I I was really lucky in that uh, when I moved into this place. Um, one of my first things I wanted to do is just to build a home gym. Yeah. And so like I got so lucky that I would say perhaps like two, three weeks before this whole thing shut down. Like I managed, managed to buy a squat rack and a bunch of weights and a barbell. Yes. So I've just been like, you know, really like, like do learning a lot about yeah. like, you know, lifting technique and just like devoting myself to that. Damn. Um, That's awesome, so, man. Yeah. It's been fun. Like, yeah. and, and and again, have it's have like, you been improving? Uh, like, you're have you been uh like putting on more yeah. weight and exactly, yeah, getting buffer? yeah, yeah, it, yeah. You just add on a bit more weight every t- single time, yeah. Um, and you know, it's it's nothing I to brag about yet. I'm still, you know, it's still, I'm still very much a novice, but it's like I'm so lucky that I got all yeah. that stuff in my basement before because the moment all this stuff happened and the gym shut down, yeah, like everything's been sold out, and yeah. so I follow this Reddit about like home gyms yeah and i'm seeing all these people like 
build their their own squat racks out of like two by fours and mm. cement and i'm like shit I, that's I'm crazy so yeah you don't have to do that it. yeah and yeah. uh do you see any physical physical improvements like in your body or does their your, your fiance are you gonna rip? um certainly not ripped at all uh, i mean i think i have to eat a whole lot you know really yeah, to, yeah. to get ripped and that's something that i have to focus on a, a little bit later but like yeah i'm certainly seeing like some improvement you know they, awesome. they call them newbie gains right yeah. so um but um for me I, it's not even about like getting bigger i just want to like i just want to stay active i want to stay healthy yeah. yeah that's cool man because yeah. um like i don't want to like um put a like spot on me but like i've lost like 22 pounds man yeah in the past good, man. six yeah. weeks he's been he, yeah he lost yeah, yeah 22 pounds 20, six 20, weeks been watching shit. his diet yeah yeah so, I, so, I, just eating because he'll just eat sugar and, and eat carbs shit. and he cut all that out yeah like i went from like 185 to like i'm like at 160 right now that's yeah. amazing dude and yeah. you just did that mainly from diet yeah just from dieting yeah i i, yeah. I bought a food scale i'm like like weigh my food out and I'm like watching when I'm, I'm logging in my, my calorie count. I'm doing all, all that stuff. Yeah. I completely took sugar out of my, my, my diet. Um, so, so carbs. the sugar was coming from you like eating out, like what, what exactly has uh, the change? Breads, uh, donuts, you know, just stupid, stupid crap that I don't need. Yeah. And my A1C do, level was kind of high. Do you see him that like his, his gut's almost gone? Like it's just like, he's, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. He's slimmed down a lot. So yeah. It's no, that's it's amazing. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Josh? Uh, I probably lost like eight pounds, but I've been lifting a lot too. So my, I, I was kind of made for the like this quarantine thing because I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad I have my my son because it, it's, it makes it entertaining. It's like being home on a regular day. So I have that. See, I, won I wondered about like about that. You know, is it yeah. does it drive you crazier being nah. kind of touch of the family? Because I've heard like from you know a friend of mine actually, um, Marcus Marcus Vanderberg, who lives actually in L.A. He's got a newborn as well, and he says like. You know, like when the, when the baby's that young, you pretty much have to like be at home anyway. So, yeah. so and, it's like, and it's other like people have said that it, yeah, it's like a regular day off. It's like it's like yeah. eh, I'm just like it's yeah. So it's not bad. It's like it's entertaining. We go outside to play. He can walk around now, and he's like just like watching movies. So it's like a regular day. And then uh, as far as a home gym, I had a home gym already. I have like yeah. a couple of cardio machines. I had weights and all that. So I was already doing this whole quarantine stuff already. And now with the sun, I don't really go out that much anyway. So yeah. it's like I was, it's like a normal thing for me. So it's fine. So you could do a whole a whole another year. I could do a whole another year. I don't mind. No, yeah, it's yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's yeah. to the point where he doesn't want to like go back to work. He yeah, I'm to like, dude, I'm good, man. Collecting yeah. the unemployment, and I'm like, you know, doing <laughs> doing podcasts on the regular and working out routine. I have a workout routine now that like I can stick to. So it's all good. Now, wait, I have a, I have a question. Not all you. good. I don't want to be insensitive. To you. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're um, making the best out of a bad yeah, situation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, I had a, a bit of a personal question, but like you don't have to, if you don't feel comfortable at, like answering it, don't, don't, please don't. But um, like you mentioned, a uh, fiance. I was, I, was gonna, I, I was gonna ask that too. Yeah, I the last time I talked to you, she was your girlfriend. So if you don't mind yeah. sharing, update, how that come, update us, dude. Yeah, update how that come to fruition. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we've been dating for like five, like five years. Yeah, actually, and um, this was we just come back from our trip to Japan because she came with me uh when i was there for wrestle kingdom she joined me pretty much like a few days after and yeah. we like had a great trip to japan and even by that point like i had already gotten the ring but like you know you get to the point where man i'm not i'm not sure if i should bring this ring with me all the way to like japan you know to propose like yeah. so much could have gone gone wrong i could have lost yeah. the thing because they could have like checked it at the at the yeah. security thing and like you know what yeah. a like so i ultimately i decided to like wait until we got here um she and i had actually just bought a house so wow congrats yeah, wow yeah yeah thank you so yeah a number of like significant like 2020 is like crazy changes, year yeah. already thus far but um so yeah like before we had moved in um i guess i just decided to do it a few days before her birthday and uh surprised her at home before we had actually moved in but like you know i like did the whole pedals and like you know fake candles and things like that ah, and just look at you, it up hey. and just kind of surprised her and she wasn't expecting it at all and it, it, it turned out great was it just you and her when you proposed or what did you have her family yeah. there or was it like no no it's just us it's yeah. just you guys oh, okay that's cool wow. that's like, damn you went all out that's a, yeah, congratulations that's awesome. yeah, it's a, hopefully it's a one-time thing yeah so and then you moved into your house already how do you how do you like it yeah is it like 
Did you did you get did you buy a fixer upper? Did you go like a turnkey type of thing? You guys are up and ready to go. Yeah, I mean it, it, the place is pretty modest, you know. Um, but like like the market in Toronto is already crazy, so it's yeah. like it's it's definitely like the biggest I would say responsibility that, that either of us has t- been taken on, yeah. and um. It, but thus far, it, we're we're extremely happy. Yeah, like yeah. we're we're both people that like we don't spend that much anyway. I would say we're we're pretty frugal, so everything's pretty much going to a mortgage at yeah. this point. So yeah, we're we're pretty happy. Nice, congrats. And, nice. and are you guys, gonna, yeah, uh, are, are you guys planning to get married this year or next or? Uh, it was initially going to be next summer, so not 2020, but like 2021. Okay, summer. hopefully things by then. That's, that's probably it's probably for the best anyway. Right now, it would have been very difficult to pull it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't really know any of this stuff about like how long it takes to like you know put one of these things together. Um, but apparently, it's like venues you need to book at least like a year out. Yeah, I, I got I got married last fall, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was a. Uh, did it take that long? It it took a majority of the year. I would say from like early mid spring to we got married in October, October fourth. October mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it it you're planning all the way up until like the week of because you gotta like they they you won't have your guest list solidified and all the details mm-hmm. until like the week of. So yeah, we got pretty lucky in that sense too, like because we we had finalized our date yeah. again before all of this stuff went down, and then like. As you would expect, there have been a number of cancellations around this time for this year, right? Yeah, so right. everybody's trying to get dates for next year, yeah. and like next year's going to be like crazy, uh, you know, if, if everything tries to get back to normal. Yeah, we yeah. we did a we I, I proposed to her like on her birthday, and then we got married like almost two years later. Two yeah, years later, my, my son my son came in like the 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 year that we were planning to do it, so we pushed mm-hmm. that back, and mm-hmm. then we yeah so. Yeah. Well, the night he proposed, I was, I was freaking out more than he was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then how did you do it? Uh, it, it was like she was opening her gifts, and we had everybody there. It was, I did it at a restaurant, like one of our, like a, a favorite restaurant of ours, at a table. Yeah. Like there was like fifteen people there for just us, and then on top of the other people that were there, um, I waited till the end, uh, and I told her she had one more gift to open, and that was it. Yeah. Amazing. Nerve wracking. Then that's when all the nerves come in is when you i'm sure yeah, the feeling is like when uh when you finally do it it's like when you finally i ask it's just like dude you get like this wave of emotion it's crazy and you were you uh, uh james you're really nervous for him why why were you nervous for me uh, i don't know i just thought <laughs> yeah i don't know i i thought that was a possibility of her saying no not that, not, not that you would that. yeah but just that possibility but yeah. in his wedding i was like crying like a baby man i was his best man i was just yeah, crying the whole time yeah like a baby Aww. Like That's I didn't beautiful. even make it through my speech. I was, I think most of my speech was me crying. That's awesome. It's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's a big, big, a lot of changes for you this year, man. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, yeah. That's that's awesome. That's really cool. You know, speaking mm-hmm. of of Japan, um, uh, Josh, myself, and you, like, like we all share a common show that we like, which is Terrace House. Yeah, and I think, of course. I think, and I think Terrace House got canceled, right, because of the. the of the of the uh, pandemic, yeah. suspended, yeah, yeah, suspended, suspended. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I believe they're like I don't know how, how how much you guys have caught up with the current season, but like the the He's watching North. It. So the North American season is like delayed from the Japan release, right? Yeah. yeah. And I believe that the Japan release is probably I believe they ended somewhere at like end of January. So I'm sure they filmed a whole lot more, but they just haven't either edited it or they haven't filmed the segments with the panel, basically yeah. reacting to the shows. Um, so we don't really get to see the moment where they're even told, hey, the season's being suspended. Um, I'm sure they have all that footage. I guess we just don't know you know, when we might pick back up. Yeah. Uh, okay. Could be the fall. Yeah. I could see them putting out in the fall, maybe. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Where, no. You've caught up. On, you guys have caught up. I haven't caught up on this new season yet, on, like, on yeah. its entirety, but... Uh, what do you what do you make of it? What do you think of it? Have, have you enjoyed it as much as the other season? Um, it's been like I would say the season of people that you po- could possibly hate the most. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's always entertaining because it's Terrace House. Yeah. But this season has like so many, or at least like towards the end, they've got so many unlikable people. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much you have you seen all the Japanese ones, James. I have well, not. I think I've seen most of them though. Okay, you know this guy Nino. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, I fucking yeah, hate me this too. Guy. He's yeah. terrible. Yeah. yeah, he's he's one of yeah. I I completely agree with you. 
he's just a guy who like you know like i mean this show is very much a dating show and so you see this dude out on dates and he's just like incredibly manipulative and incredibly pushy and you just you're just like yelling through the screen for like the girl that he's trying to like yeah. you know make out with to just like push him away and call the yeah, cops or something yeah <laughs> so it's so great, it's that type of thing yeah you know a great show to watch i've been watching is uh is vanderpump rules man what is it called uh vanderpump rules it's on, it's oh, vanderpump Bravo. Rules. okay yeah are you guys big reality shows show fans? Uh, I I pick and choose mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pick and choose. I'm not much of like like the popular mainstream ones. No, I, no. I think Terrace House. Uh, I got into Formula One racing over the over this whole quarantine thing. You did. Yeah. Are they, they still going on? No, they well they suspended this season. I think they're pushing it back to like the summer. But um, they have a really good uh um, like Netflix documentary series on 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 it right now. So it's pretty cool. Oh, Tiger King is a great one too. Yeah, Tiger King. Yes. Tiger King. Yes. yes. Uh, the Last Dance is phenomenal. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm pretty much on. Like, I'm waiting for the final two to drop. Yeah. Honestly, that that Kobe one is tough, especially here in LA, because because yeah. we live in LA where Kobe, you know, I mean, I mean, this is the house that Kobe built with Staples Center, so, mm-hmm. so watching those episodes were kind of tough on me. It was, it was it was hard to watch. Yeah, of course. I mean, everything's still like so fresh. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Now, oh, yeah. now speaking of the, of the whole pandemic and and pro wrestling, because you know they're going hand in hand. Yeah. Like, what are your thoughts on on the WWE and and them? You know, still going with the, you know, still put on shows, still put on live events. Uh, do you agree with that with them and and what they're doing? Or are you basically don't care about what they're doing? Um. No, I certainly care. Yeah. Uh, and I ultimately I I don't agree with yeah. the shows continuing. Um. Especially several weeks ago when I think the concerns were even that much greater than they are now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, it's so, it's really strange. Cause like my, my feelings are constantly changing about it where, um, ultimately I, I am against the things happening. Um, but the, as the weeks progress, I, I, I feel a bit more assured in some ways about maybe the precautions and the statistics, I suppose. I mean, yeah. the fact is that like they've done shows for this long, they had one positive case, and yeah. that was somebody that they claim was uh, only caught it outside of their system. Um, in some ways, it is assuring. At the same time, I just know like it, it really should might just be a matter of time. You yeah. know, the more you tempt fate. Yeah. Um, so ultimately, um, I'm against it. Yeah. At the same time, like I, I'm, I'm kind of strange in that I'm able to like separate you know, perhaps everything that's been going on with, like, just the performances themselves. Yeah. Like, anytime we have to go back and rewatch, you know, like, old wrestling matches with, like, a Chris Benoit or something, I, for the first few, it was definitely weird, like, of, of John and I doing older reviews, but then, yeah. like, I kind of, at some point, I've gotten to the point where I, I'm able, and this might make me very different from most, where I can kind of separate the performances from kind of the politics that are going on, mm-hmm. I'm and I... I kind of find myself, you know, feeling like that with a lot of the shows right now, where we can review them and I can objectively describe, you know, was this a good show? Was this a bad show? Was this a good match? Was this a bad yeah. match? Where was this a good performance or was this not? But ultimately, um, you know, if you're asking me whether or not I think these shows should be going on, whether or not this risk should be taken, especially for a company that's, you know, going to be generating record profits, I would say no. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'm, and I'm with you, uh, Way, uh, especially with Benoit. You know, like his his we, work. We, we reviewed uh, Benoit's uh, documentary on yeah, Vice, the, the dark whole side. Vice doc, mm-hmm. the dark dark side of the ring, or whatever. Yeah, and um, I mean, I have no problem with, like watching a Benoit match just because like he was such a great worker. I know like the way things ended was disturbing in a lot of ways, but I, I mean, I can appreciate his work and 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 what he did mm-hmm. in the ring. And kind of like ignore it for yeah. however long the matches, and kind of separate. I mean, I don't know. Maybe a lot of people out there can't do that, but I mean, I'm, I, mean, I can do it. Yeah, I think I think um, yeah, Benoit was a, a a favorite of mine for I think the latter part of the, like the the WWE my WWE watching, um, but the I, like I look at other sports, NFL, basketball, and they they are able to put away put aside some of the antics of some of their athletes and let them play and nobody really bets an eye. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, I know Benoit is a special case where he, you know, he did the things that he did, but I can, I too can separate 
uh, my my feelings towards it uh, towards him as a person and what he did and him as a performer and my love for him as a performer i don't know and and yeah the wwe too like i i don't agree with them necessarily forcing the issue of putting on events but you know it is uh, i can put my feelings aside too and just watch it, it's rare for me to like you know like desire to let's say want to go like pop pop in a benoit dvd or like you know willingly want to do it if i wasn't yeah. going to do it do it for a podcast and i i wonder if that i would feel the same honestly with these wwe shows i don't know if i would be willing to just you know on monday night hey let's check out raw and let's stick with it for three hours i don't think i would have been doing that anyway unless yeah. i was doing this podcast right um but you know um as to when i do kind of like you know sit down and actually like focus on what's going on and it, i always find it to be an interesting exercise to try to like you know think about my thoughts about what i'm watching when i'm watching professional wrestling yeah and I think um, when it when it comes to sports like like or like WWE and the UFC, and it's not surprising that Vince McMahon and Dana White are the two guys out there right now that are leaders of organizations that are pushing the issue and like kind of like it, it's it's in their nature, it's in the, their sports individual sports nature to push the issue all the time. So it's just it's mm-hmm. just we know that them to be this way. Um, and it's not, I guess it's, on that side, it's not surprising to see them that they're they're the ones out there, kind of pushing to open things back up or at least keep things somewhat normal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I think they're both personalities that, in many ways, are very similar, and they they are personalities that don't feel like they can be pushed around and be told what to do. Yeah. And you know, you can argue that that's part of the reason for their success. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, this is a situation where. I really do get concerned that people's safety is going to be put in danger uh, for that stubbornness. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of performers who are grateful to be, you know, performing. Right. Yeah. Now. Exactly. What do you think of their? Uh, the, obviously, I think the WWE kind of learned from their first initial uh, like performance or like put a show uh, and how mm-hmm. they kept the lights on, how they kept the the yeah. seats in the arena, like. I, it's kind of common sense to turn the lights off and to take the seats out. Like, I don't know what, what, what would you make of your first uh, viewing of their first event? And since it's, it almost felt like those initial shows, they were trying to emphasize the emptiness yeah. and almost using, you know, the empty vibe as sort of a feature, like lighting everything the same way as it typically would have been for a, uh, you know, full, full audience uh, mm. performance. You had triple H, you know, doing the introduction in a wide shot, yeah. uh, t- t- telling us this is going to be a special show with an empty room. They're drawing a lot more attention to it, I right. think, in the hopes of, uh, you know, presenting it less so as a weakness and something as a feature. And there might have been a novelty to those first couple episodes, but, I mean, obviously that quickly wore, wore down quick. And um, I think AEW, when they started to do their show, pointing their camera at the stage rather than the audience, it it was immediately noticeable how much better that yeah. experience was yeah. and that it was a way better experience when we can forget about the emptiness of the place and mm-hmm. instead, you know, be directed with during, be able to direct our t- attention just to the, the product in the ring um, and to, to mimic, I guess, some semblance of like, you know, there being some sort of atmosphere. Mm. So, um, yeah, and that's when they made the changes of not, you know, WWE themselves by pointing the camera to the set, uh, not lighting the the empty seats. I don't even know if there are seats anymore. Yeah, I think yeah, they took them out. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah, and you know, another um, another positive thing that the WWE has done is they it really kind of forced them to be more creative, like in the the WrestleMania matches with the with Taker and AJ Styles, but I mean, I enjoy the, the Bray Wyatt, John Cena one more, but yeah, I mean, both those matches, I mean, we, they yeah. I mean, were great. They're really entertaining. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of been like one of the things I've much like how I would say like, you know, the two of you have managed to like take a negative and turn it into a positive yeah, in, yeah. in your own personal lives. Yeah. Like I feel like there's a lot of room to, to be able to, to grow creatively in for professional wrestling or for anything using right. this particular opportunity. One of those ways is seeing these, you know, cinematic matches and some of them have worked. Some of them have not worked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. But I love the fact that they're at least taking the risk. Because I think one one thing that 
you know, I can criticize about this company is that sometimes it, they stick to the format a little too right. much, especially when it comes to production. Right. Everything is like, you know, backstage interview with Charlie Caruso or like Renee or whoever with like a perfectly lit background. And it's like uh, scripted lines here and there. There's still a whole lot of that. But yeah. now is the perfect time when, you know, you are missing so many tools anyway to like rethink, rethink everything from the beginning and to see what might work and what might not. So this, this thing coming up on Sunday with this uh, Money in the Bank, I I'm actually quite intrigued to see how it plays out. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And you know what? And I've been recently um, doing a timeline from like I think '97, and right now I'm on 2001. But watching watching Owens matches, man, it makes me kind of wish that he gets in that Hall of Fame already. But I know there's the issues with 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 Martha, his widow. You know, wanting him mm-hmm. to be there. Did you see any kind of compromise with Martha and maybe him finally being in the Hall of Fame? Because I think that, you know, without the WWE Network, I think people would forget how great Owen, you know, was. And it's kind of sad to see him forgotten in that way because of Martha. Perhaps. I mean, you know, at the same time, the man hasn't really been mentioned in WWE TV, like, for yeah. all these years. And yeah. yet we still talk about him, you know plenty um so i don't know i feel like even if he honestly this is a completely personal issue for uh martha hart and her her family like they they have gone through a level of pain that none of us will understand right yeah so so to like it's it's a really difficult decision um for for her um and I would say I'm sure there, there's plenty of public demand. I mean, like, Bret Hart himself, you know, really has said the same thing. He doesn't want his brother's legacy to be forgotten about. I contend that it'll st- stay alive either way. But, um, I, you know, with enough fan support, I could see her maybe entertaining the idea. But ultimately, it really does come down to, to her decision. Mm-hmm. And what, yeah. uh, Switching over to MMA real quick, are, are you going to cash the fights this weekend? Are you still keeping up with MMA that much? Honestly, no, not at all. Like my interest ever since I I left the fight arc has been pretty minimal, to be yeah. quite honest with you. And especially with all this stuff going on, I get I keep updated with you know what John tells me. Honestly, yeah. with the news that I follow, that that he he reports and the shows that uh, he and Phil Cher talk to on our sites. Um, but beyond that, like I honestly don't have that much interest. Especially yeah. like this is a case where I feel like my personal feelings on whether or not these shows should occur i i'm i'm fine to to boycott because yeah. i don't really care either yeah. way right right what do you think about fight island and them going through with that uh, when you uh, being on the outside not so much fo- following the sport that much anymore but you're hearing that they're pushing you know dana white coming out pushing the issue of putting on events now in florida which florida opened up and then fight island which he says is going to happen or, or i think it's fucking <laughs> crazy yeah like yeah. it's it's like super villain shit you know <laughs> yeah like yeah. yeah um no it's, it's wildly it's, entertaining just to hear about like the news updates are so unbelievable that they're just fun but it's like it's such a shit show um i guess in some ways like i just i want to see them kind of pull it off just to see like just to be able to to say like this exists yeah it's insane yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of super villains in yeah. uh, sports today. <laughs> I, saw, I saw an article where uh, I think it was MMA fighting where they were talking about um, that the the fighters missed their opportunity to really push the issue of representation in this whole like pandemic, like shutdown, like mm. and that they didn't unite during this time to like, no, we're not going to fight because you you could get sick or you know. I don't know. What do you, you think they might have missed a, an opportunity there? Because they're, they're under a different set of rules than like WWE. Well, uh, who, let me ask you: Who would need to lead that chart? Which which athletes or which characters within the community the would big, have to big, be the, the first big, to step the big up? Big names, yeah, the big names: Conor McGregor, Tony Ferguson, Justin Gaethje, Khabib, yeah, yeah those Khabib, guys. You know. And what incentive do you feel like those guys might have? Uh, paid? Well, they're getting paid. Yeah, yeah, they're getting paid. They are getting paid. They are getting paid. They're but I mean, like, what, what incentive would they have to to, to, to help up. other people? No, not much. Yeah. No, they, no. they would really have to just put themselves aside and yeah. you know to get to ask them all to do that. No, I'm sure it's in their. It's heads. a system. 
I mean, it's much like pro wrestling where, like, as an individual, essentially, like, we're talking an individual sport in many ways. Yeah. Like, even in pro, pro wrestling, it's it's a system that's just not built for something like that to occur. Yeah, they're pretty much um, independent contractors is what they are. Mm-hmm. And, and they're competing with everybody. Yeah. They're competing with each other. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. Like, the topic of unions has actually come up a lot, like, yeah. during this period. And I really don't get the sense that we're inching any closer to it being a reality. There's going to be a lot of talk, but unless like the people at the top, you know, are so um, universally selfless or like they, or they have like a united motivation to, you know, for their own needs to band together, to speak up against the people that they're, you know, um, that are uh, uh, against their employers. uh, It's hard for me to see anything occur. Yeah. No, yeah, it's it, it's really tough. What do, what do you guys have going on uh, coming up uh, for the for you know post wrestling? Any any new things that you're working on during this time? Um, what, what's 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 new? What's we, what's changed in the 2020 for you guys? Man, we've just got a lot of shows, and I would say like our our schedule on our lineups is just uh, continues to grow with like any new idea that we possibly have. So uh, those that are you know really bored right now certainly have no shortage of things to listen to. If you go yeah. to postwrestling dot com right now, we have I would say three active podcasts that are going on, and that'll be us post wrestling, which is primarily the the, the, the iTunes feed that John and I run, uh, and that you can get our raw review, you can get our AEW Dynamite review, as well as our Cafe Hangout, as well as a number of MMA reviews that John Pollock and Phil Chair talk to. They're doing a UFC 249 preview this week, as well as a UFC 249 post show later on this uh, Saturday Sunday night. Uh, we also have a number of shows from WH Park covering Japanese professional wrestling there. Our friend Nate Milton does a Rocky Maya via picture show, which is a, uh, uh, a career Hollywood film retrospective on the career of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So you can find all that at Post Wrestling. But we've also got Up Next, which is our friends Braden and Davey. Those they guys. host. They are amazing. They host a weekly nxt review show but they're really a lot more than that um they also do a lot of star wars reviews this week they got a lost review that's going on they've recently started a patreon that i would say they really put more effort into perhaps than like their actual feed themselves like they they pretty much like i feel like they might they may do as many shows as, as us now and a lot yeah. of people might not even be aware of it but like on their feed they've got like uh, dynamite reviews they've got um uh, you know, like retrospective reviews, both for an NXT and also this thing called Best Match Ever. Th- those guys have been doing such a great job, so I wanted to shut those guys out. And we've also got the British Wrestling Experience, which is a bi-weekly show about Brit- British wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, hosted by our friends uh, Ben O. Martin and James. And those guys have just been doing tremendous, tremendous work over the past, you know, like several years that they've been doing shows. So that's pretty uh, awesome. just wanted to shut everybody out. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. Uh, uh, one last thing before uh, we get going, but... um. Is there any plans of making like uh, any pandemic merchandise for your post wrestling store? Pandemic merchandise? What do you mean, like face mask, like, like, like face mask, or anything related it's to, so, the, to the pandemic? It's so funny because like I, 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 with all our merch, I actually like um, make them through this online portal that yeah. like designs or like they they supply the raw material, then I can actually do all the designs online myself. And one of the new items that they just have have had in stock was face masks. Like it's 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 like they're selling face masks and they're also selling like scarves. Um, it's a little much for me. Like <laughs> I I feel number yeah. one I don't want to take responsibility for yeah. people's health yeah. with a yeah. with an item of merchandise that I I wear. And secondly, it's just I it's not really within our style. Like we kind of do our t-shirts and yeah. we'll do our hats and and that that is kind of like all we're really interested in at the moment. But uh, know, maybe seems- it's maybe it'll be a Patreon perk. For instance, yeah, dude, I would love to wear. Uh, Post wrestling face, I mean face mask or anything of post wrestling. Because you guys gave a have some really cool merchandise, man. So props to you and John for Thank that. You. And I don't know if you, if you if you join your Patreon, you can um, it automatically gives you a, a chance to win some merch, right? Yes, that's right. Actually, this is uh the 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 draws have been something that I've I've kind of like withhold for a little bit just because uh we haven't really been sending as much physical merchandise with everything that's been going yeah. on, but it's mm-hmm. something I want to pick back up certainly, and so um. Yeah, yeah. If you join the Patreon, there are a number of tiers. Some of them contain physical mail. At the moment, we're not doing as much physical mail because we're just not sending physical mail as yeah. much. But we are sending digital greetings to a lot of people, and we're trying to keep that a surprise. So, um, 
it's you you kind of have to think of like different ideas you know with right. everything that's really awesome yeah and you know uh when it's like really late over there in toronto so we're gonna let you go but um i don't know like it's been really cool not only to to call your friend but for you to you know to come on the show yeah. and um to you know good, give us good your time good to talk yeah, to you again dude, like Likewise. Like, yeah, the last time I saw you guys like was before we even started the new site. It was like yeah. that was yeah. the period right before I, 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 I was like during the last period I, I was at the Fight Network. So yeah. everything's kinda of changed for 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 yeah. me at least professionally yeah, since a, then. A lot of, and for a lot you personally, Josh. Yeah, yeah. A lot has changed. Yeah. Um, but all for the better. So Yeah, man. But so yeah. yeah. So best of luck with, with getting married and uh, best of luck with you Thank and you. John and post wrestling, I'm like, like you guys are killing it as always. Yeah. And uh, you and John are, are you know like role models from Josh and I to kind of like maybe uh, catch up to you guys one day. But it's it'll be a while before we get to that <laughs> point. But we appreciate yeah. everything you do for us, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, you guys have been grinding for like a long, long time, and um, just that consistency is incredibly respectable. So, well, thank um, you. Right, yeah, man. All right, All right, well, take, you care. Think, take care. Much love stay, and respect, stay, man. Stay safe, and we'll hopefully Thank you guys we'll, so we'll, much, eh? we'll hang out uh, soon. You know, we gotta go to Roscoe's. Next year. If we yeah, get we gotta to go LA. back to yeah, Roscoe's. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, we man. appreciate it, brother. All right, stay safe. All right, I eat too, man. All the well. All, All the guys. Bye. And that was waiting. Thank you for being on the show. It's great to catch up with them. Yeah, and uh, again, go to postwrestling.com yeah. and you want to join his uh, their Patreon, postwrestling.com slash Patreon. And then have great merch at postwrestling.com. Yeah. It's that store. All right. And that's our show. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back next week. Hopefully with the guests. I think we have, we'll have someone special for you guys. Yeah. And, and we'll review all the fights from this past weekend and then look ahead to the 13th card. So until then, catch you guys next week. Be safe. <laughs>